receiving today. They're both on the same side of the field right up here. Trouble with the snap. It's picked up. Lateral to Edwards. He laterals it forward. And Loveland is tackled. And that will do it. An ugly last play for Michigan. It almost looked like Oluwatimi snapped it before J.J. McCarthy was ready. Yeah, it looked like an illegal forward pass on that play as well. The end. I think the officials are talking about that. Watch. J.J. McCarthy was looking out to see the coverage, and the ball was snapped. He was not ready to receive it. And then it was just a mad scramble for anything. No, that's okay. The officials still conferring. It is TCU ball. Number two. Boy. For video review, there's no foul for targeting. That's easily understandable. Duggan takes a knee, fitting that the football is in his hands as they march on to the championship game. The horn frogs. You know, all credit to them. They won the game in the 60 minutes that was played. And, uh, you know, they're a good football team. No matter what it is, uh, they, they got the win. And uh, fought our hearts out. There's a lot of things that uh, we could have done better. Can't wait to watch the tape, but we'll be back, and I promise that. And what your team still bounced back from all of that. Is that where you feel good about, not good about a loss, but good about? Oh, obviously. I mean, I feel, I feel uh, so proud. I mean, I, um, the way our team, yeah, they never quit. They never, never gave in. I feel, feel really proud. Some, I mean, can't say enough. I mean, how, how, uh, how many phenomenal plays were made in the game. Um, by our guys, and I feel, feel very proud of that, yes. We've got some breaking news out of college football where Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh could miss the first four games of the season. That's coming from multiple reports. Harbaugh facing potential penalties for making false statements to NCAA investigators who are looking into recruiting violations. Michigan's first four games this season are all at home. East Carolina, UNLV, Bowling Green, and Rutgers. Rutgers is a conference game. Taking a look at Harbaugh's attorney putting out this statement this afternoon saying, quote, we are continuing to work cooperatively with the NCAA staff on an enforcement matter. At this time, we are not allowed to comment on possible penalties or other aspects of the matter, end quote. And I, I think our memory is so short now, I, I think a lot of us had already just put that on the back burner, kind of like with the Tennessee thing until the actual – Sanctions got handed down the other day. Well, with Michigan, they've been negotiating this thing behind the scenes for quite a while. And I think it's really important to note in the Dellinger report, this isn't final. And so that'll go before the Committee on Infractions. And the way that works for most people who are unfamiliar because you have a life to live, yeah, you get handed down the notice of allegations, there's the investigation, and then you go through the penalty phase. And the Committee on Infractions is ultimately the governing body that decides that. Well, if they do negotiate this thing down to four games, you see the schedule there. East Carolina, UNLV, Bowling Green, Rutgers. Michigan is a three to four touchdown favorite every game there, if not more. And that really is what the public cares about. But like, what chance do they stand of losing games they otherwise would have won? Uh, this ultimately should not affect outcomes of those games. I think it's important to note offensive coordinator Sharon Moore allegedly also facing some kind of penalty here. And we have to assume that may be a suspension as well. So it's not just a Harbaugh thing. It's mainly a Harbaugh thing. Tommy, I don't expect this to impact them on the field in terms of a win becoming a loss. What you do have to wonder about is 
they've got their best shot at a national championship in maybe some of our lifetimes if you're younger does this impact that that's what you have to wonder about big news out about michigan and jim harbaugh michigan will self-impose a three-game suspension they're going to walk over these teams early. They're the identity of that team. Two professional running backs in the backfield, Blake Corm and Donovan Edwards. But I'm eager to see how they handle the adversity that they've been going through this year. I think adversity brings great teams together. And if Michigan is going to be a great team that contends for a national championship, they need to come out with a chip on their shoulder and set the tone for the season. J.J. McCarthy drops back, finds an open receiver. Touchdown, Wolverine! Michigan faces off with UNLV. McCarthy looking for a receiver. Finds Roman Wilson. He's in for the touchdown. Dog. Dog with the capital D. A W G. Dog. He's the culture developer and the leadership developer for this Michigan team when Harbaugh isn't there. Great flicker. McCarthy taking a chance in the 10. And it's in a B. Knocked around. And caught up to the flexion by Johnson. Touchdown, Michigan. This Michigan team, they're like a boa constrictor. A boa constrictor moves slowly and confidently, knowing that once it gets you in its grasp, it's over. Pocket for McCarthy towards the end zone. That is caught. Touchdown. Subhanj Morgan. Big touchdown maker, McCarthy scanning. Loads of time for McCarthy. Now he wings it downfield. To the end zone, Roman Wilson. No other team has been as complete or as dominant as Michigan this year. Second and 10, fakes the handoff. Calic Manis, it's intercepted. Will Johnson, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, Michigan. Michigan's one of the best teams in the country. Indiana has struggled. McCarthy feeling the pressure. McCarthy throws. Caught down the sideline. Loveland breaks it in. Touchdown, Wolverine. Breaking news. The NCAA has opened an investigation into number two Michigan. Connor Stallions, a retired captain in the Marine Corps, is being investigated by the NCAA as the linchpin of what has been called an elaborate, quote unquote, sign stealing system at Michigan. All you can do if you're a player is go win football games. Go win football games and then hold up the banner at the end because at the end of the day, the game is played by the players on the field. And just because you know what's coming doesn't mean you can stop it. Michigan Wolverines, yeah. which is also in the state of Michigan, mm -hmm. which is now being party. accused of uh, cheating, obviously, and stealing signs, which has had everybody have a take on it. Every competitive human you've heard speak about it, just like with SignGate with the New England Patriots, mm -hmm. has come out and said, yeah, people have been trying to steal signs in every single facet of every single sport since the beginning of time. Now Pete Thamel saying, you know, they've kind of zeroed in on Connor Stallings. Ooh. Connor Stallings, ex-captain in the Marine Corps, I do believe. That's right. He has been hired by Michigan over the years, and they uh, seized his computer, allegedly. Uh -oh. He has been the one that has been linked to being the guy that has set up the sign-stealing operation, if you're reading all the narratives and tea leaves coming from Pete Thamel. Now he's saying... This guy's bought tickets for more than 30 games at 11 Big Ten schools over the past three years. Also, video evidence of sideline taping is expected to be sent to the NCAA this week, caught by stadium surveillance around the Big Ten. Uh, mm. Now, there's a counter-argument to this, that Connor, former captain in the Marine Corps, also was buying tickets for maybe military vets oh. around Big Ten schools, okay. trying to represent Michigan in that particular way, which might be the case. But what they're alluding to is that this guy was the chief officer operating officer of the sign stealing operation <laughs> mm -hmm. and i'm fascinated to see what video evidence gets turned in because what if this surveillance is like every other surveillance video we see grainy you know pretty mm -hmm. not, and it's just this guy with his Whoa. phone up yeah. every single day somebody on the internet finds something new that we're all going to be incredibly pumped about now it's this dude was undercover on jim McElwain's sideline of the central michigan team jim McElwain, known fisherman yep that's yeah. right known Fisherman nice boat. Jim McElwain was one time a wide receiver coach for Michigan. Now his name's being brought into the Michigan controversy because allegedly this Connor Stallions guy, former captain of the Marines, was hiding on their sideline, maybe with recording sunglasses, oh. trying to get Michigan State signals. Now, I believe what Michigan's going to say about all this is, 
this captain in the Marines, we appreciate his service. Hell yeah, of course. Thank you. And he went to the Naval Academy, obviously, and he was accepted to Michigan, always been a Michigan, one, a Michigan man, wants to be a Michigan man. But whenever we hired him, we said, yeah, we would like a guy that can maybe decipher some signals. He's a rogue agent. You think we're sending mm-hmm. him to Central Michigan to worry about Michigan State? You don't think, you, you think we're worried about Michigan State? That's what Michigan's going to say. And then the entire conversation's going to be like, well, Harbaugh, you did reap the benefits of what this psycho was potentially doing without your knowledge of it all. It's going to continue to grow. And every day, it's something new. Last week, it was the, against Ohio State yep. where everybody on the sideline yep. go to the sky. Yes. This time, it's a guy hiding on Central Michigan sideline. And now Jim McElwain, head coach of the Central, there he is. Put his head down. Oh, no, camera. Yeah. Hiding. <laughs> camera. What are you looking for oh, down there, no. guy in a hat? We don't know. Maybe he lost his contact. Could have been. You oh. know, the sidelines are a little hectic and mm-hmm. everything like that. But it certainly looked like he was going, whoa, 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 whoa. Like he's an undercover cop. Stallions you know, like then allegedly forwarded those tickets to a network of individuals who would illegally scout those games for the Wolverines and record the coaches of Michigan's would-be opponents relaying signs to the offense and defense. In fact, one former Division III coach told ESPN that Stallions actually paid him to attend games of future Michigan opponents and videotape their sidelines. Stallions has since been suspended by the school pending the results of the NCAA's investigation. And if you're wondering how the NCAA was tipped off about Michigan's alleged scheme, it was an outside investigative firm that notified them. Who hired that outside firm? It's unclear. However, Michigan's alleged sign stealing was something of an open secret within the Big Ten, and certain opponents even changed up their play calling signals in response, none more effectively than TCU in last year's CFP semifinal. And this is the part where I mentioned that the timeline of the alleged sign stealing operation overlaps with an incredible turnaround for the Michigan program. The Wolverines earned their first ever college football playoff berth in 2021, then did it again in 2022, earning a pair of Big Ten championships along the way. And in each of the last two seasons, the Wolverines finished as the AP's third ranked team in the nation, marking the first time since 1999 that they finished in the top five. And they've been even better in 2023. They're a perfect 8-0 so far and have yet to win a game by fewer than 24 points. Meanwhile, they have the best defense in the country, averaging less than six points allowed per game, and they've ultimately held steady as the AP's number two ranked team all season long. But whether the alleged sign stealing contributed to their ongoing glow up is ultimately irrelevant from an investigative and judicial perspective. What matters now is who besides Stallions was involved in this alleged scheme and what happens if slash when the growing pile of evidence leads to a quote unquote guilty verdict. Well, for his part, Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh has denied any knowledge of the sign-stealing operation and said that he never directed anyone or was aware of anybody else directing anyone to illegally scout or videotape opponents. That said, under NCAA rules, Harbaugh, as the head coach, could be held responsible for a violation committed by a member of his staff. And remember, Harbaugh is already facing charges from the NCAA for an alleged recruitment violation and a subsequent refusal to cooperate with league investigators, conduct that earned him a three-game suspension from Michigan. Not the NCAA, Michigan. All of that is to say that even if investigators conclude that Stallions operated alone, Harbaugh could still pay the price. And given his history, that price could be steep. And in a way, Harbaugh is already facing consequences. According to the Wall Street Journal, the Wolverines have rescinded the contract offer they recently extended to him, a contract that would have made him the highest paid coach in the Big Ten. But if you're wondering if these alleged infractions will cost Michigan their shot at another CFP berth or potentially a national championship, the answer is probably not. Drops back, looking for a receiver. He's intercepted. It's number zero. Mike Samuelson. He might go all the way. He's in for the touchdown. Wolverines, domination. Are you kidding me? Michigan is the most complete football team in America. Offensively, defensively, special team. They are different. I think the NCAA is sitting back hoping against hope that Michigan, which has a really good football team, gets punished on the football field because the NCAA needs Penn State or Ohio State or both to beat Michigan. Biggest story of the day, Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh suspended by the Big Ten for the final three games of the regular season in the wake of sign-stealing allegations. The worst nightmare for the NCAA would be have Michigan in the playoffs having broken rules, right? Korob with a hole down the sideline. Can he get there? Blake the Great. Touchdown Wolverine. 30 yards. 
I want to thank the Lord. I want to thank Coach Harbaugh. I love you, man. I love you, man. This is for you. For this university, the president, our AD. We got the best players, best university, best alumni in the country. 10 at the 25. Here's Tonga Vailoa. Reverses in trouble and sack. Loose ball. Picked up. Michigan has it. Touchdown, Wolverines. This is the game of the year. There's no bigger game in the college football season with Michigan and Ohio State. The path for the loser to get into the playoff is so slim and narrow that this game is everything. This game means everything. Welcome to the big house, the largest stadium in America, and I hope you're ready to watch the biggest game of the season. It's the world-famous Ohio State Buckeyes and the Michigan Wolverines do or die. Out of the eye formation, Max Bredesen, the up back, core up, touchdown Wolverines. Third and 10 of the 22, J.J. McCarthy looking over the middle, caught, touchdown Wolverines. Roman Wilson. A disturbing scene on the field, Zach Zinter, their all-American right guard, came back because he wanted to be a part of this team, felt that they had unfinished business, got his knee rolled up on, folks, and we're not going to show it to you. This is their leader, Zach Zinter. Corm, dancing. Corm breaks a tackle to the end zone. Blake the Great, touchdown, Wolverine. And what a huge touchdown flashing the 6-5 for his offensive lineman Zach Zinter who was just carted off the field. Receiver at the top of your screen. McCord looks, fires, intercepted. Rod Moore and Michigan will win the game and head to the Big Ten Championship. I just love my guys so much. That's the thing about this team. We love each other. We play for each other, and it's a special, special group. Welcome to the 2023 Big Ten Championship game as the undefeated and second-ranked Michigan Wolverines prepare to take all court appearances. 10-2, Iowa Hawkeyes. First down and goal at the six-yard line. Blake Corum, touchdown Wolverines. He has officially become a Michigan legend. J.J. McCarthy takes the knee. The final score, Jim Harbaugh. He doesn't want to get soaked. Look at him. He's still got some balls. <laughs> so the commissioner of the Big Ten, Tony Petiti, the trophy to 65, Zach Zenner. I got one question for you, Michigan Nation. Who's got it better than us? No! Buddy. They want to win a championship. They've won the Big Ten now three straight years, but they've got their sights set on something more. McCarthy just takes a knee. He will hand it to overtime. That's that block up and it gets big yards. Three Michigan tight ends in the ball game. They hand it to Corb again and makes the cut. First down. Spence that scores. Blake Corb. Michigan on top in overtime. It wasn't fancy. It was just old school determination on the ground. Blake Corum, another touchdown to break the Michigan all-time rushing touchdown record. And what a way to do it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And what a job by this offensive line, right? Really good push up front. timeouts to take here. Game on the line. It's 
Williams in motion, low snap, Melrose stopped! Michigan makes a stand and comes up with a milestone play. In the end, they put it in the hands of the quarterback, Milrow. Michigan was ready for him and stoned him short of the goal line. And J.J. McCarthy, as you said, Kirk, moments any quarterback would dream about. He drove his team down the field to the end of regulation. It was the running game that got it done at OT. It, it really was. What, a, what an incredible game. Everything you could hope for. There's nothing but class on both sides. Alabama players with Booker, the big guard. I, I still team McCarthy, yeah. yeah. Kind of a glib joke. He did tell us, I, I believe he uh, loves Michigan. I believe he wants to be there. <laughs> Who knows what kind of offer he'll get. Taking a photo down there. For now, he is enjoying every second coaching his alma mater to a national championship. Oh, he got out of there. He is handy at avoiding that. Quick like a cat. <laughs> Can't get me. Can't get me. Still dry. <laughs> Got his arm a little bit. Hey, it's a polarizing figure. There are people out there that believe that whatever Michigan does is tainted. That's up to you to decide. But hail, hail Michigan. They are the champions of college football 2023. so much built with veterans who've been through so much for five and six years one team was going to come short tonight it's washington and you feel for them DeBoer has rarely lost in his career including his couple years of washington but his team just did not have the juice and the muscle to handle this michigan team tonight yeah hey you made a promise last year that you guys would be back you promised you'd win it all. You got the ring coming, you got the hat on, man. Explain to me what's going through your heart, what's going through your mind. The only reason I said that last year is because I knew the team that was coming back. You know, it's such a special group. You know, it's bittersweet because I never get to play with these guys again, but man, what a way to come out on top. Everything we went through, it's just absolutely glorious. The defense made so many stops, turnovers, and you said it, so many guys came back. Mikey Sandra still, the guy yeah. to seal it off, man. Just can you speak to everybody deciding to come back and play such a big part in this run and in this game? I mean, I mean, the six leaders of our team, literally. And just the, the whole saying, defense wins championships, this team is the epitome of that. Our defense is absolutely phenomenal. Number one defense in the country, and they're the reason we're here today. What did you say to Coach Harbaugh as the clock hits zeros? I don't even remember, to be honest, I blacked out. <laughs> what will you take away from this performance, from this team? What stands out the most as you look at this confetti falling and your family and your friends and this entire team celebrating the national championship? And it's amazing the things you could accomplish when you love each other and you only care about, you know, one another and just getting better every single day and staying in the moment. It's amazing what can happen. You gave a lot of people a lot of memories this entire season. JJ, congratulations, man. Thank you so much, Brad, yeah, my man. Oh, Thanks. Turn around, JJ. <laughs> pretty interesting. When you made the playoff, you and I talked, and I asked you about the perception, given the things that didn't happen away from the field, and you said, well, one thing's for sure, it doesn't diminish the accomplishment. Then I noticed last night you actually used the word, hey, we're innocent here and we're champions. So what is the perception now? How much do you care about the perception of what this is going to be from this point forward? Mm, I don't know. I think um, it's going to be what, you know, uh, what people, it seems like 
if I had one thing I could change, it's just that, you know, I think Americans, a big, big percentage of Americans, uh, you know, they just believe what they hear, you know, they believe what they read. Uh, when I was in sixth grade, I had a teacher, you know, in English who, you know, introduced the idea of critical reading. You know, don't believe everything you, you read, don't believe everything you, you hear. Um, I think it's, I think it's like, believe half of what you see, you know? Uh, but yeah, that's, that's something, uh, you know, just don't have the time to, to control, you know, what, uh, what people, what people say, you know, what people think. I mean, there's just, um, we go back to work. That's what we do. You know, that's, that's the way we control that uncontrollable. I mean, but there's, there's haters. There's people that like to eat the hater tots and, and drink their haterade, you know, I mean, okay, while you're doing that, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be finding some work to do. And so there are decisions to be made for you, for your players, finding work to do, whether that is continuing to build Michigan or exploring other opportunities. How will you evaluate what your, what your work to do is next and what work you find to do next? And enjoy. We enjoy. It was uh, such a great feeling last night, uh, celebrating as we just talked about, and really cool to wake up this morning. And hey, it wasn't a dream. That was that was real. That even felt almost just as good as, as last night. And uh, we want to take a happy flight back to Ann Arbor, Michigan. And uh, the guys want a parade. So, gosh darn it, let's give them. Let's give them a parade. I'm looking forward to that too. And then, uh, you know, see what, see what happens. Um, no man knows the future. Nobody can predict that. That's, that's biblical. And, uh, you know, right now it feels pretty darn good. How does being a champion and restoring your alma mater to a championship status impact decisions you will make? Because you're going to have opportunities. And everybody but, says that, you know, yeah. everybody says that. I don't know, you know. Who knows that? Um, but how does it impact your thinking about how you will evaluate it? I don't know. I mean, we, we could peel back the onion and, uh, you know, different different layers of emotion and what are you going to think and how are you think? All I know is this, I'm living right now. This is, uh, this is incredible. And uh, you chase, you chase perfection. Um, you know, it's, it's what you do, you know, every day and you seldom attain it. Uh, I mean, you just, you hope to achieve excellence along the way, uh, but to actually do it, you know, to, you know, to, to have that, that perfect season, it's, it's good. I'm gonna try to enjoy that for, you know, at least, my dad has a 24 hour rule. Um, I think we made it a 48 hour rule, <laughs> but, uh, you know, at least gonna get the 24 hours. And then, so what's the time frame when you need to decide? I don't know that. I don't know. Um, I appreciate I appreciate the interest um, uh, that you have and others have. I just, just uh, I don't know. I, I don't have that answer for you right now. Well, you know, I've, I've always said, if somebody else doesn't want your coach, sooner or later you won't either. So it's a good thing for somebody else to uh, to be interested, I guess. Jim, yeah, I appreciate uh, it. thanks a lot. And so let's let's end it this way. Who's got it better than you? I know the answer to that one. You do? Nobody. <laughs> we. Oh, but I sink the room. Yeah.